Hi students, in our last video we discussed about the parts of or the constituents of an oil sealed rotary vein pump. I told that it belongs to the positive displacement class of pumps and its operation is based on the periodic variations in the volume of the pump chamber. We also discussed that it is constituted by a stator and a rotor. The stator is a steel chamber the ends of which are closed by the suitable plates to hold the shaft of the rotor in position and the stator is pierced at two ends to form the inlet port and the outlet port. Now the rotor was a steel cylinder mounted eccentrically inside the stator that is the axis of the rotor and the stator are parallel to each other but they do not coincide that is the rotor is eccentrically positioned and the rotor makes contact with the top surface of the stator uh, and the line of contact between the rotor and the stator is called the top seal. Also a diametrical slot is cut that is the rotor is cut along the diameter and in the space between the two halves of the rotor two veins are inserted vein A and vein B and they are held apart by means of a spring. Now the veins are two rectangular steel plates so that the rounded edge of these veins always remains in contact with the stator. Now this whole stator rotor assembly is submerged in oil. In a suitable oil, usually the oils are polyphenyl ether or alkyl naphthalene. Now the purpose of this oil is to seal the small gaps or clearances between the moving parts uh, in the pump and the oil also lubricates and partly cools the pump. This was what we discussed in the previous section. Now we are going to the working of the pump. Now as shown here, the working or the operation of the pump involves three stages. One is suction, the next one is compression and the other one is, third one is exhaust. Now let us come to the first section that is suction. Now the rotor of the pump is always in rotation. As the rotor rotates, these veins also rotate together with it. Once the vein A crosses the inlet and moves down like this, in this manner, what will happen? The gas from the vacuum chamber, vacuum chamber is connected here. The gas from the vacuum chamber, it will enter through the space into the position or the gap here. The gas from the vacuum chamber will enter into this through this gap or the inlet port. It will enter into this region. Now as the rotor rotates what will happen? The vein A moves in this direction and the vein B moves in this direction. That means as vein A moves down the volume here will increase. Okay. Now the volume goes on increasing as the rotation of the rotor continues and till when will, until when will this volume keep on increasing? The volume will keep on increasing till the vein B goes from here, here and it reaches the inlet port. Once the vein B reaches this position then the inlet port that means it will be like this. Vein B is here and vein A is here. So once B is here and A is there, what will happen? Hmm. Then no more gas can enter into this region. No more gas can enter into this region from the vacuum chamber. Next what will happen? The vein B continues to move down. As the rotor rotates along this direction, the vein B which has reached here will continue to move down. And the vein A here will continue to move up. So 
the motion continues now what is happening is the gas which is enclosed here is isolated from the inlet or it has no contact with the inlet now as the vanes continue to rotate what is happening is because the rotor is eccentrically placed the gas inside this region undergoes compression you can imagine it here as this vein moves down and this part moves up it undergoes compression that is initially the volume was increasing then the volume of gas is isolated from the input and after that as the rotor continues rotation the volume of the gas gets compressed and what will happen is that is the compression stage in the working of the rotary pump now what will happen is once the pressure becomes inside this region becomes greater than atmospheric pressure that is nearly if the pressure becomes 850 torr or more 850 torr or more the atmospheric pressure is about 760 torr that means when the pressure of the enclosed gas becomes greater than the atmospheric pressure that is nearly equal to 850 torr what it will do is it will push the exhaust port and push open the exhaust port and exhaust valve and the gas is exhausted evacuated from the pump or the gas escapes from the pump that is the exhaust stage so we'll so this is the three stages in the operation of the vacuum pump so let us discuss once again what is happening here that is the gas comes in through the inlet port uh, into the vacuum pump from the vacuum chamber the gas is drawn in from the vacuum pump that is the vacuum chamber is connected here that is the uh, vessel from which inside which vacuum is created is connected here the gas from that will uh, come down in this manner the gas from there will come down it will enter into this uh, in through the inlet port into the vacuum pump into this region here the gas is enclosed between the stator the rotor the vane a and the top seal the gas is enclosed between the stator rotor top seal and vane a now the, as the rotation continues and vein A continues to move down, what will happen? More and more gas evacuated from the chamber enters into this region as A moves down and B moves up. Until when will this entry of gas from the chamber to the pump continue? It will continue until this B rotates, that is the both the veins are rotating together and the position of B goes like this and it reaches the inlet port that means once b reaches the inlet port means a is somewhere here it reaches like this a is here and b is on this side once it is like this the gas evacuated from the chamber is enclosed in this region then what will happen b moves down b moves down means into this region no more gas can enter from the uh, vacuum chamber so this gas is isolated from the inlet okay now the veins continue to move down that is b moves here and a moves up the rotation continues and the gas is held between the vein b the top seal and on further rotation what is happening is this gas is getting compressed why is it getting compressed because the ro rotor is not placed in the center the rotor is eccentrically positioned so when the veins move as the veins move from here to here what will happen is the gas is getting compressed and the pressure of the compressed gas once it becomes greater than the atmospheric pressure it will push open the exhaust port or the exhaust valve and it comes out or escapes out of the vacuum chamber this is how mm, the vacuum rotary vein pump functions so i hope the functioning of the vacuum pump is clear to all of you now what we have to learn is what is the pump displacement what is the value of the pump displacement in a rotary pump pump displacement is given by its equation is given by pump displacement is equal to st is equal to uh, 2v into n st is equal to that is pump displacement is equal to 2v 
into n that is the volume rate at which gas is swept around the pump the volume the rate at which the gas is swept around in the pump now what is the reason for this uh, term 2 that is uh, v represents the volume between the two veins uh, but during one rotation of the rotor both the waves veins are in operation that is inside this uh, stator when the uh, suppose this is the vein a and this is the vein b this is the end a of uh, the first vein and this is the end b what will happen first one some amount of gas is enclosed here as it continues to move down more gas enters from here to this that means on either sides of the vein gas is enclosed that means two times uh, that is during one rotation of the rotor the volume of gas equal to twice what we expect on one side is enclosed inside the vacuum pump that is the reason for this term 2 here so st is equal to 2 into v into n where n is the number of rotations per unit time so i hope you understood how we calculate the pump displacement that is the volume rate at which the gas is swept around the pump now the rotary vein pumps uh, produce vacuums in the range 10 raised to minus 2 to 10 raised to minus 3 torr. Now the maximum pressure or the ultimate pressure achieved by uh, the uh, maximum pressure I mean maximum vacuum or the lowest pressure attained by the rotary vein pump is often limited that is though it has a capacity to uh, produce pressures as low as 10 raised to minus 3 torr it may not be able to reach that much low pressure because of two reasons one is uh, when the uh, pump is in operation the maximum pressure at the end of the at the last stage at the compression stage the maximum pressure of the compressed gas might be less than that of the atmospheric pressure if it is less than that of the atmospheric pressure what will happen the the compressed gas will not be able to push open the outlet valve and come out of the vacuum pump then what will happen the pump action repeats the pump re-expands and recompresses the same gas without uh, absorbing any new gas or without accepting any new gas from the vacuum chamber. So uh, that will affect the minimum pressure reached by the uh, reached by the uh, pump. Similarly the oil that circulates inside the pump the oil that seals the gap inside the pump can uh, pick up various gases or it will absorb various gases from the uh, atmosphere and once inside the pump chamber the adsorbed gases get released from the oil so considerable amount of vapors from these uh, from these adsorbed gases also contribute to the vapor pressure total vapor pressure and it will increase the ultimate pressure that the pump can arrive that is the ultimate pressure the pump arrives is constituted not only by the gas entering from the chamber but also from the uh, pressure of the gas coming from these adsorbed vapors or uh, adsorbed gases that means these two points limit the lowest pressure that is attained by the uh, rotary vein pump one is after compression the pressure attained by the compressed gas may not be high enough to push open the exhaust valve that is the compressed gas might not attain a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure then the whole process repeats the whole cycle repeats uh, without uh, taking in any new gas from the vacuum chamber that means the ultimate pressure that the rotary vein pump can attain is getting reduced another one is the oil may absorb the oil circulated inside the pump may uh, absorb uh, or it may absorb various gases from the atmosphere and inside the chamber these adsorbed gases are released from the oil and together with the gas coming from gas molecules coming from the vacuum chamber into the pump these gases will also be pre present and they will increase the ultimate pressure the pump can arrive at 
ओके सो दीस आर दि टू रीसन फॉर लिमिटिंग दि अल्टिमेट और लोवस्ट प्रशर दैट कैन बी अटेन वै दि रोटरी वेन पंप नौ दिस् ग्राफ शोस् दि दि पंपिंग स्पीड एंड दि प्रशर अटेंड बै दि रोटरी वेन पंप इट शोस् दैट फ्रम अबउट Uh, 100 torres or from atmospheric pressure to nearly one pressure uh, one uh, torre atmospheric pressure that is about 760 torre to about one torre the unit of pressure is given in torre here so from atmospheric pressure to nearly one torre the pumping speed of the uh, rotary pump remains almost a constant about one torre the pumping speed is remaining a constant but after that till about 10 raised to minus 3 torr what is happening is the pumping speed is going on decreasing okay so this graph shows the relation between pumping speed and pressure for a rotary pump okay so how does the pumping speed vary it remains constant from atmospheric pressure to about 1 1 torr that is 760 torr to about 1 torr the pumping speed is remaining a constant after that the pumping speed drastically reduces from 1 tor to about 10 raised to minus 3 tor okay so this much about the variation in the pumping speed of the rotary pump now uh, now to attain much better uh, pressures ultimate pressure that is minimum to minimize the pressure inside the vacuum chamber we can use two stage rotary vacuum pump where one uh, vacuum pump is uh, connected to the exhaust of the other pump so that better pressures as low as 10 raised to minus 4 torr is attained better pressure means more minimum pressure or better vacuum is attained by using a two stage oil seal rotary pump here the outlet of the first stage or the uh, exhaust of the first stage is connected to the inlet of the second stage exhaust of the first stage is connected to the inlet of the second stage okay now one more point we have to learn here is the last thing what is the problem main problem of an oil sealed rotary vacuum pump is the contamination of the pump oil due to water and other condensable gas vapors present in the uh, vacuum system what happens is uh, the oil gets contaminated because of the condensable gas vapors present in the vacuum system what happens is when the pump is under operation what will happen the condensable vapors get compressed during the compression stage when the gas condensable vapors get compressed they will condense and uh, what will happen they contaminate or get mixed with the oil that circulates in the pump okay now what is uh, this will also limit the ultimate pressure okay um it will contaminate the liquid and limit the ultimate pressure an efficient way to uh, prevent this contamination of oil is to admit a ballast gas or this procedure is called gas ballast it is what is done is by means of the gas ballast valve atmospheric air that is a ballast gas usually atmospheric air or some inert gas is admitted to the pump chamber through an ballast valve through a gas ballast valve in addition to the in inlet valve and exhaust valve in the first figure which showed the exterior of our vacuum pump there was a uh, figure shown initially in the last session where we saw that in addition to the Uh, inlet valve and outlet valve our rotary pump also has a gas ballast valve what does this gas ballast val valve do it allows the entry of a ballast gas the ballast gas is usually air or some inert gas now what happens is uh, by opening the gas ballast valve we can eliminate or expel Uh, the small portion of these condensable gases uh, together with the air that we have allowed to enter without affecting the efficiency of the rotary pump what did i tell the air which enters into the uh, pump 
through the ballast valve will carry the condensable gases together with it and will be expelled out without allowing these condensable gases to compress and condense and contaminate the oil without allowing that the air will carry the condensable gases together with it and uh, thereby we can prevent these condensable gases from affecting the efficiency of the rotary pump. So I hope you understood what is gas ballast. So I will repeat once again that is uh, in gas ballast what is happening. I mean uh, one of the major problems of the oil seal rotary vapor pump is the contamination of the pump oil due to the water and other condensable gas vapors present in the gas. Uh, present in the vacuum system now what will happen is when the pump is in operation these uh, condensable vapors are compressed and they condense to form the liquid this condensed liquid will mix with the pump oil and it will circulate in the pump contaminating the liquid um, so so what will happen this will affect the ultimate pressure we, i told you previously two factors which affect the ultimate pressure one is the contamination of the oil which affects the ultimate pressure now to prevent the contamination of the oil what we do is we allow a ballast gas to enter into the pump at the compression stage through the gas ballast valve now what this air does is it will carry away these condensable vapors well without allowing them to uh, condense and form liquid and contaminate the oil it will simply carry away these vapors uh, and uh, uh, without contaminating the oil and during the exhaust stage the ballast gas together with this uh, combustible vapor i mean the condensable vapors will come out or will be exhausted out through the outlet valve okay so this is the function of uh, the gas ballast stage in the uh, pump operation so i hope the functioning of the rotary pump is clear to all of you if you have any doubt please do contact thank you